I'm Clara Hermit and this is another episode of the Help Yourself podcast. Please make sure that you like, review, share, subscribe. I don't know whether you're watching this or whether you're listening to this, but either way, make sure you get involved and become part of the gang. Joining me on this week's episode, he is a comedian, he's a singer, he he just does so much stuff and and we're going to be talking to him about it today. It is the one and only Bash the Entertainer. That was like a whole range of sound effects there as well. That's my little, how do you call it, air horn? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, look at that. How long did it take? How much practice to get that right? Like a day. I'm really good at noises, isn't it? I can make a lot of like... What other ones can you do? Go. Uh, Oh my God. Oh, no, you put me in the spot. You just Um, said you're really good at noises. I I can do a puppy. Go on then. I can do that. Um, What else can I do? Um, a pig. No, it's not a pig. <laughs> I can do a few. I can do a few. I'm on the spot. You just said that. You're like, you know, actually, I can't do that one. Um, so the Help Yourself podcast. So this podcast is all about talking to people um, who I love, who I look up to, who I think are doing amazingly, okay. and talking to them and understanding about their journey, their processes, and how they manage to create the success that they have managed to okay. create. Because it's interesting. It's a mad world that we live in, where there's like, I think, so much opportunity for us as individuals to create success, but there's a lot of hurdles that can come up along the way. Yeah. And I always find it really interesting to find out how people manage to navigate those hurdles. So... This is your life, I'm joking. This is your life. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Um, so for you, how did you know that you were going to become this kind of content creator that you wanted to be in the public eye? Um, like I'm not going to lie. Like so ever since I was young, I always had this thought in my head that I I want to be famous one day. Yeah. But I didn't know I I would be kind of famous for doing this. I always wanted to play American football, which is actually really crazy. But I only I wanted to be in the public eye, like be on TV and be on movies and uh, be on TV shows. So the reason why I started doing like comedy was when I was younger, when I was in high school, even primary. Yeah. For me to fit in into the group that I wanted to hang with, I had to be the funny guy. Okay. So I thought me acting silly and getting in trouble with teachers and now and then, ins- not really insulting people, like, but making jokes of, of people. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like people, oh yeah, 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 he's funny. I used to be called Biggie. Right. That was my name before Bash. So like people, were like, oh yeah, he's quite funny. So like I started getting to hang around with the cool people. Okay. Started being friends with me, and so I thought, oh, if I'm the class clown, then people. I bet your parents love that. No, they didn't like that. <laughs> I was getting suspended like mad. I was. I, I'm never gonna lie. In high school, I got suspended nine times. Wow. Two more times, I would have been expelled. But I kind of fixed up because I didn't want to make my mom angry with it. So I just kept being the, the 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 funny guy, and then I was really kind to everyone else. Yeah. Even though I was annoying at times, I never bullied. Yeah. I'm just the annoying guy. So I just made jokes. I loved with people. And then they were just like calling me the funny guy. So I've just been funny around school. When I went to college, it was the same thing. But I think the reason why I started on social media was like I went through a phase where it was like mad, st- I had mad stress. Yeah. And I was really depressed and like a lot, I get like really bad anxiety as well. So I went through that stage and I thought to myself, the one way for me to get in my comfort zone is to laugh and then to make others laugh. So when I see someone in stress and I make them happy, that makes me feel better. Right. So when I make someone smile or someone laugh, I, I really love that. So I thought the only way, the one way I can do that is by making videos. So one time I was like on this app called Vine. You know yeah, Vine, yeah, right? yeah. So I was on Vine and I was just watching Vines and I was like, wow, this, these people can make someone laugh in seven seconds, it's crazy. So let me try doing it. So I did my research and there was no no really anyone in Scotland doing videos. So like, you know what, um, why, why would I be the first guy to do it? So I started doing videos now and then, like situations like when I went to the club, I get rejected by a girl, I just make it funny. Yeah. If I go to the club and ask for a girl's number, she doesn't give it to me, I just make it funny. Like I exaggerate it to make it funny, like in seven seconds. So when I started doing vines like this, like people actually started like, uh, like laughing and they were enjoying it. I was like, oh, this is, this is really, really cool. So I just kept doing it. I was doing it just for fun. And I was doing it because like every comment that I used to read was, oh, you're so funny. Like when I wake up in the morning, I like watching your videos or I've been through this. And when I watch your videos, you make me feel this. And I, I used to love that. I was like, yeah, this is awesome. Like I'm actually making others feel happy. I'm taking them from a bad place to a good place. So like just keep going. And um, one time I did a, a video for Unilad for like Call of Duty. And then um, I got paid kind of like a lot in this. So I was like, oh, I'll give me this much money 
by doing this why not just make it into my job yeah so i just i stopped college i stopped everything and i just started doing videos 24 7 and then yeah that was when bash was born like how long ago was that um i started doing videos at the start of 2016 so four years ago okay mad it's really interesting because when you like you're you, you you're doing it because you want to make other people feel happy you want to yeah. make other people smile but when you're doing it and it's getting like you know 10 you know 100 views or whatever did you care? Was it? Were you ever doing it thinking like, oh, it needs to get numbers? Was there ever a point where you were like, oh, it's all about the numbers? Or did it come from a place of like of passion and then that came as a secondary thing? Like when I first started, <clears throat> I didn't really care about the views or the yeah. likes. But when I started getting a little bit popular, I was really obsessed with how much likes I get and how much yeah. views I get because I wanted to get to a stage where I'm on the same level as other people that I used yeah. to watch. So I used to focus so much on them, but not on myself. Right. So that's where I, I used to be really stressed and depressed. Like, if I post a video and I don't get, like, 10,000 views, I'll be in my room just proper sad. Then I'm like, I shouldn't even be like that. But it was like that. So my friends like telling me, yo, we don't like the way you do this. You compare your views to people. I used to even, like, if I'm arguing with someone or we're talking about life, and then I'll be like, hey, bro, shut up, man. I've got more likes than you. I used to wow, use stuff like okay, that as well. yeah. And then my friends like telling me, like, you, you do this a lot. Like, we don't like it. So we're just letting you know. You're still your boy, but like fix up in it so i just like i clocked in i was like nah this is this is not me i'm not that guy that does yeah. this so from there i just thought you know what i'm not gonna worry about views or likes and just just post the video and just do it for the fun of it yeah and then the more you don't care the more it just happens wow look at that but isn't that interesting luckily you had that friendship group around you because mm -hmm. it was also it's what you're doing to yourself by constantly comparing yourself to other people mm -hmm. and being like oh i'm not as good as them or, and then it's obviously making you feel not great yeah. Your friends Sucks. are noticing that and seeing that and then they're like, you need to stop doing that. It's not cool that you do that. I was doing a lot. I was really doing a lot. So like, I used to, I used to envy people. And I, like, if if anyone, wa like, if anyone watching this, like, if you're doing content, yeah. you shouldn't worry about what other people are doing. Yeah. You should just worry about yourself. Be yeah. happy with what you're doing and just continue. Because, like, what happened with me was I used to watch all these different comedians, all these different viners, and then they blew up. They yeah. gained cars, they gained houses. And I wanted to be like them so much that if I don't get to their stage, I used to just feel mad depressed. Like I want to post a video for like a month. Yeah. Because I'm just so sad and I just want to be them so bad. But then like, I just thought, bro, like, everyone does their own thing in their own time. Yeah. It happens for them in their own time. So yeah. your time will come, but don't worry about them. Just yeah. do you. But it's also counterproductive because it's like, because it made you feel so rubbish, mm. you stopped posting videos. Yeah. So you stopped doing the thing that could get you to where you wanted to go right <laughs> but i say that because i understand it like that's exactly what i do so it's kind of like you know in that same vein where i'll see other people and other people have been successful or other people have done this or other people have done that and then i feel like what i'm about to do just feels really insignificant and mm. i don't want to do it and i don't have the right energy to do it anyway so i'm not going to do it and it's not going to and it's like, but no, you need to be consistent and you need to just do you mm -hmm. and forget everybody else because it doesn't it doesn't matter what they're doing and it doesn't matter how, even how you feel about it because you feeling envious, the same as me feeling envious, it's me who feels envious, not them. I feel rubbish. So that's not going to help me create. But luckily you obviously realised that for yourself and went, no, there must have been times though, even though you're like, right, I'm not going to do this anymore. Mm -hmm. Because it's become a behavioural pattern, there must have been times where, what did you do? Catch yourself in the loop. Like, there's been times where, like, even past two years, it yeah. does happen. Yeah. Like, I'll be doing videos a lot, I'll be posting a lot of videos, yeah. and then automatically someone that I've been watching for, like, a day, in, like, a week's time, they've popped more than yeah, me. Yeah. Before, I'll be like, what? In my room, I'll be like, nah, it's not fair, but nah, nah, what? <laughs> I've been here this time, it's not fair, but now I just feel I just feel like when I see it, I'm like, you know what? No, congrats, man. I really appreciate that. That's really good. If I talk to them or I'm friends with them, I'm messing yeah. like, bro, I'm really proud of you. Keep doing your thing. Like, respect. If you ever need my help, just shout me anything. Boom. And I just leave it like that. Cause like I feel I feel better when I do something when I do something like yeah. that. Because if I don't, then I start envying what they do and I start getting angry that they've popping more than me. It just kills my vibe. Yeah, like and I, stops you doing what it is it that you do. And I know, like, they won't care about how I'm feeling. Yeah. So it's just myself that's making myself feel bad for no reason. So that's when I just... That's a big that's understanding it. and a big lesson to learn. And also, I guess, had you not have learned that, you wouldn't be able to consistently make yeah. content because it would keep stopping you. Yeah. I've also heard you say, like, when we've, like, 
um, worked together previously that sometimes you'll wake up and you won't feel great, but then you do that kind of like your video, like your first video of the day, or you do like a snap where you're kind of giving out all of that positive energy mm. and that brings you up as well. It does, it does. Like I, th there's been times where I wake up in the morning, I'm not really feeling to do anything else. Yeah. I don't want to do videos. I don't want to do snaps because something I did two weeks ago didn't get the, um, the reach that I wanted yeah. or I didn't get the views that I wanted. But as soon as I wake up and I think to myself like, there's people waiting to watch my snap to yeah. see what I'm gonna post. Yeah, they always see me as this positive person, which I am most of the time. Mm. So I feel like it's not people may say I'm two faced, but it just comes on like this. I'll be sad for a second, mm. and then automatically when the camera comes on, I'm just boom. I'm like yay. Yeah. And I just do all the snaps. I do all the snaps. I do all the laughs, and then when the camera goes off, I'm still that person. I'm still the happy person, but deep down it's just there just ticking like yeah you're still you're still a bit sad man yeah. but i try my best to just keep myself positive all the time because like i don't like to get to that stage where i let the, um, the sadness and stress take over because when it does take over it's, it's bad for me i don't i don't like to get to that stage so i just keep myself happy so yeah so that you can kind mm -hmm. of i guess keep yeah keep yourself in a good place mm -hmm. and keep yourself doing what you do but i think it's really interesting because it's not I don't think it makes you two-faced. I think it makes you human. Like, mm. none of us are happy 100% of the time. It's impossible. Like, it doesn't matter who, you know, we might look at other people and think they're happy all the time. Every time I see them, every time this, every time that. It, you can't be happy the whole entire time because part of being human is this kind of, like, up yeah, and down. up and down, yeah. And how do we learn, you know? But also, it, when you said as well, like, when the camera comes on, you kind of just, like, you know, you change. Um, I think... That or or you change your energy. I don't think you change as a person. You just change your your energy. Mm -hmm. But for some other people, that can happen like in life generally. Like say for example, I was having a rubbish day, and like I felt like you know it's like I don't know. I you know how your mind you can overthink things. So yeah. this little thing, and then it becomes like the worst thing, and then this is going to happen, and that's going to happen. It's the end of the world, and blah 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 blah, and then da 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 da, and then my phone will ring, and I'll get a call, and it will be someone saying. Um, like, I don't know, like you've got this job or this has happened and suddenly I'm the happiest person in the world. No, wouldn't it? It's so really <laughs> the, the states of being human are never like permanent. Nothing is ever permanent. No yeah. matter how much, it, you know, sometimes it feels like that or seems like that. We're all capable. Or like watch a kid and they're in like a mood, like they're in the worst mood. They've been crying. You know, like when, when a kid falls over and hurts themselves mm -hmm. and then they start crying and then someone gets a packet of sweets. And just, it's just gone, it never happens. And the pain is gone. It's yeah, exactly. So, so I think it's kind of like that happens with with all of us. But I think the the thing is with being a like a creator and and making content and stuff, you're kind of putting your stuff out there, mm -hmm. and then when you do put your stuff out there, you get loads of love, you get loads of positivity. But sometimes you also get the other side of that mm -hmm. as well. So how do you cope like with that? Um, Has it ever affected you? Before, before like when I first started doing the videos. Um, uh, I did a video. Where I, I didn't even actually record this. My friend recorded it. I used to be a PR for a nightclub. Yeah. And then we went to the club to get our wages. And I was just walking the street with my boys, and then we just got paid. And we saw like there was like a homeless, like about two homeless people on the on the floor. And then they really were hungry and asked us if they, we can get them food. So we went to Greg's and then we got them food. But without me knowing, my boy was recording the whole thing. Yeah. So I like, we get them food, and then my boy had a guitar because he plays music. So he started playing a song, and because I sing. I sang them a song as well. So we just sat on the floor singing, we were just vibing. And then I went home. And then someone just called me, yo, did you see the video on Facebook? I was like, wait, what up? So I got on Facebook and I see the video. And then the comments were just, I thought it would, the comments would be like really nice. good comments, but yeah. people were just so harsh. Oh, this black dude, this, this fat guy, this, this black, this, that's blah, 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 blah. Oh, you're just doing this for the popularity, you're just doing this for the fame, blah, blah, blah. Should I record it? How do you think they feel? And every comment that I read, like hurt me so much that mm. I was like, nah, this is this this sucks. I can't be someone that, that wants to do videos and people are saying this stuff about me. And then like it actually made me feel really bad about myself and I didn't like it. Like I, I didn't really feel like myself. I felt like I used that person to get to a certain amount of views, which I didn't. Which I didn't really care if it was on Facebook or not. Yeah. So like it really, really hurt my, my, my feelings the way people were saying stuff about me, about my skin and about my my weight and about the way I just am as a person. But like, after that, my big brother told me, every time you post a video, yeah. <clears throat> if you read the comment and you let it affect you, it will stop you posting videos the way you do. Yeah. Because he knows how I am. I'm mm -hmm. really... Sensitive. I'm, yeah, I'm a soft person, isn't Yeah. It? So what I did was, you know what, like, when someone says a bad comment, not what I do now, 
if someone says a bad comment about me, I'll twist it and make it funny. Right, okay. So if you call me fat, I'll be like, okay, thank you. Okay, that's, oh, I'm fat, what, what, what now? If you say something about my my relatives or my brother or my mum, I'll just switch it and then point the aim at you. Yeah. So I mean, so some of them are rude. Yeah. So if you're rude to me, I'm rude to you. If you're nice to me, I'm nice to you. So that's what I do now, man. If you if you say something about my race, I'm like I just act like I'm shocked, but I'm not really shocked. I don't really care. So I I just make it funny, but I can't really say what I say in my comments because it's really bad. But yeah, that's what, <laughs> that's what I do now. If someone mentions like my family member or someone says, oh yo yo. But mom. when you do that, so when you do that, do you find fun in that? So like, or are you feeling you're not feeling bad when you do it? You're not feeling angry or I'm annoyed. Not, I'm not feeling bad or angry. I uh, I don't feel any type of way anymore. Right, okay. Like. So I just feel like there's just the person that's writing those comments. There's something wrong with you for you to just sit in your chair or in the computer or you're in your phone to just write that comment about me, even yeah. though you don't know me. I ain't done nothing to you, but you just want to write that comment about me. So there's something wrong with you. If someone says something bad about me, uh, sometimes I'll be like, you know what, God bless you, yeah. or thank you, or I'll, I'll diss your brother or your mum. It just happens. But now I just, that's how I am now. You're going to give it. You get it back, mate. Of course, that's how it is. Um. Do you, because earlier on you mentioned about anxiety and that's yeah. something that I've like had to <clears throat> like to deal with and that mm. still like, it still happens. I think it's kind of like one of those things that no matter how great things are going or whatever, sometimes I wake up and I'm just like, I feel anxious. Mm. Like, what is this? And why is this? I'm hitting my chair. Because you're just like, no, I don't like, I don't want to be feeling like this right mm. now. But sometimes it, it happens. So how did, how has anxiety kind of manifested for you? Like, when did you first notice it and how do you manage it? Um, I never used to have, like, I never used to, like, suffer from anxiety or depression when I was when I was younger, when I was in school. I wasn't, I didn't really get it as bad. Yeah. But I think it, it became worse when I I had a daughter. Yeah. When I had a daughter, like, I was the happiest person in the world. I was so, so happy. I was like, you know what, I actually have a daughter. Like, Aww. I care for another living person, do you know what I mean? But um, but then things went a bit wrong, like things not wrong, but things went a bit sideways. Like me and my baby moms didn't really have an agreement. Yeah. And um, I didn't see my my daughter for like two years, <gasps> and um, oh. that's when my anxiety and depression became worse. Mm. And it was like I used to think about my daughter every day, like oh. every day. And if I don't see her, like it will hurt. If I go on Facebook and I, I don't see pictures, it will hurt. And um, it got to the stage where my anxiety was so bad. That I'll make these scenarios in my head that will make it so worse that I start panicking. And when I panic, I'll start like hyperventilating and I'll stop so breathing heavy. So you're having heavy, panic attacks. And then I'll just p- pass out. That's why yeah. I live with someone else till today. Yeah. I can't live by myself. Right, okay. Apparently, I, they, they say that I suffer from PTSD or something. Yeah. So I, I always like being with someone because if something, if I get a panic attack, yeah. I like being with my brother or my sister so they can like, you know, either wake me up or just take care of me. Really. Yeah. So the more I wasn't seeing my daughter, the more it got higher. Right. It got higher, it got higher, it got worse. I'll be in, in public transport, I'll be in an Uber, and then I'll, I'll still get it. Yeah. And um, but when I get to the, where I'm going, I'll hide it. I'll put on this face like hard, I'm, I'm, I'm happy. I'm like, yeah, I'm cool, cool. But deep down, it still hurts. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So it got worse. And then um, 2018, Christmas Eve, Yeah. I got allowed to see my daughter again. Oh. So I started seeing my door and everything was fine, everything was going well. I kind of I started feeling like I'm not going to get that feeling anymore. And um, it got to June 2019, my visit stopped again. And then just, just recently, like just December, yeah. is when I became okay. Right, okay. Like you'll see me on social media, I'm this happy person. I'm, yeah. I'm all excited, I'm alive and I'm shouting. But since June last year till now, I'm still sad about my daughter. I still haven't seen her, but I never say it. Right. I never show it because I I know like there's so many people watching me that have so much faith in me that I have like all this that was like they have this image of me being this happy dude. So like they want me to always be happy so they can be happy. So I feel like I have to keep that up. Like if I'm if I don't if I make myself sad, I've just ruined their day, and I don't like doing that. Yeah. So I feel like I care a lot about making others happy and I didn't really think about myself. Yeah. So, yeah. And, um... you got to change that. I know. I, I really I really have to change that. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. you got to change that. I think it, it's, it's like, 
when I hear you talking about it and, and kind of like the, the anxiety and the panic attacks and stuff like that, like I've kind of been through all of that stuff and it is really difficult, especially yeah. when you're feeling so anxious. But I always find like w- when I'm, when I've got to work, so rather than turning up somewhere and feeling like that, I just tell people and then then them having that conversation with me, it instantly makes me feel better. Mm-hmm. Like once I know they're aware of it, because it normally, like it was happening to me when I was doing radio and I'd be live on air. So I'm like, this is difficult because like, I really wanted to be myself as well. And I was like, this is not allowing me to be myself. Mm-hmm. And I found by like letting people know that I was feeling anxious, it would like really help me because then they already knew. So it's like the power that that kind of anxiety had over me that something's going to go wrong. All of a sudden, if everyone knew, then it, it made it like feel much kind of much better for me. Um, but I also think, and I have to say to you, like I commend you for being like so open and honest about mental health because I think there's like so much stigma, stigma, stigma <laughs> attached to, especially for men, like to talk openly and honestly about their mental health Mm -hmm. about what they've been through and when you share that that that's your reality i think it allows other people to share that it is their reality as well because like online at times i talk about it but not always right like on my snapchat i always let my fans know how my situation is going with my daughter yeah i was letting them know how it's going so sometimes their feedback makes me feel at peace yeah and sometimes i'll get people that are going through the same thing as me yeah asking for my advice yeah like, yo i've not seen my door either like wh- wh- how do you cope yeah and then I'm, it's not like it's not a lie but i'm giving them advice on how to cope well you are coping you're here I mean. you're coping you're still managing to live your life yeah but as i guess like as an effect of that coping there is anxiety or there yeah. is like times of depression and and i think that's really like it's really important because it's people who have or suffer with there's so many different types of depression and anxiety and um, but who have that, it doesn't mean you can't live a life as well, or just because you're living a life, you can't have those things. I think there's probably millions, if not billions of people who have, you know, anxiety disorders, depression, and and yet they still function. It, yeah. it doesn't mean that you can't function, but it's just, it's still there. And so you are coping. So for some other people, it might mean that they can't function. So you're already steps ahead of them because you're coping with it and managing to function. Yeah. So you are giving them advice. You're just giving them an advice from the place that you are in. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I used to feel like me giving them, I used to give them advice, but I won't do what I'm telling them to do. Yeah, okay. So I'll be like, you know what, you should do this, you should be like this, you should just don't worry about it. Like yeah. everything's going to be fine. Everything works out in the end. Yeah. So I'm telling him to do this, but I'm You're not, not doing, doing it yourself. I'm not doing it myself. So I started little by little, like the advice that I give, I do the same thing. Yeah. So what I go through and what how I cope with it, I just tell them, you know, this is how I cope with it, so maybe you may help you too. So it's just been like that. And um, it, get, it gets worse at times, and then it goes back to normal. It gets worse, back to normal. But now I know how to I know how to catch it. Like, if, if, if I know it's about to start, yeah, I know how to catch it. I know what to do. I know, like, I, got, I have to call someone, or there's a TV show that I watch, or there's a song that I listen to that will just keep me in myself, so yeah. I don't have to think about it too much. But every time something, every time I get closer to, basically any situation that involves my daughter brings yeah. it. If it's something else, my rent or my bills or my you debt, don't worry about I don't it. care. Yeah. I'll fix it. If it's like my broken leg or my finger, I don't care. But as soon as I hear something like, boom, yo, court this, daughter this, automatically my mood changes. Yeah. Like even right now, I'm trying so hard not to cry. But like, Aww. no, no, it's, it's mad because like I miss my daughter so yeah. much. Like, nobody knows this. Like, I don't say as much, but I miss my daughter. And what kills me is, she, she doesn't even know who I am. Like yeah. it sucks, bro. But um, I just pray. You know, I just pray that it happens. And I, I've, I have court on the twentieth of this month. It's my first hearing, so I don't know what's gonna happen. But um, I just pray that I get to see my daughter. I, I really wanna have her with me because it sucks, man. She's three. My mother's never met her. My my sister hasn't met her. But I think it's another situation as well that it's kind of like one of those things that we don't hear like the male side of the story when it comes to that. And I know like there's a, a lot of different movements and and a lot of talk of that on social media as well, right? It's mm-hmm. like, you know, in these situations, men like are left suffering and it's kind of like, 
you know, people might look at your life and be like, oh, you know, Bash's life is great. Like he's built this massive platform and he gets to go and do all of these things. But, and all of those things are great. And, and they're, you know, massive achievements and they're beautiful things. But for you, obviously you love your daughter and, mm. and that's the kind of overriding thing that all of that stuff, you would just probably trade it straight away. I would. So it's it, it's that kind of love and passion. And I think that the fact of the matter is, the fact that you're talking about it, that you speak about it, A, helps other people, but B, it, it's there as well. Like she will always know that you felt that way. So at some point, you know, that that will be there and, and, and she'll know that that's how you felt and how you were. And things can change at any moment. And I know that's kind of like what you say, you say to other people, it's mm -hmm. like, at least you're doing, you're going down the route, the only route that you can, and you're doing things, you know, it takes time, but you're doing things as quickly as you can and taking the action that you can to yeah. get you to, to kind of that goal. But yeah, I think it, it's just such a beautiful thing that you have the ability to be open. And as much as you, I know you do, you're, you're known for being funny and you're known for comedy and et cetera. It is so, so, so valuable that people get to see the other side of you because it gives them permission to be that way as well and I think like I think, you're think such a people, brave person more people should do it I, I feel like most guys don't really like to talk about how they feel or how yeah. what's going on because of how other people will see it we'll perceive like, them yeah people have this image of men being so macho and so like big man yeah yeah you know I don't feel no pain but deep down I, I know you're going through something yeah so I'm I'm not the type of guy to hold everything that I, I have inside and and to just act like I'm a tough guy but I don't care I'm soft I don't, I don't really mind that but I don't think it makes you soft. I think it makes you strong. Mm. I think it makes you courageous. I think it makes you brave. And I think it's like probably one of the most attractive qualities that a man can have is to actually be able to embrace their emotions rather than deny them and to be able to speak about them. Because to me, it's like if you can't do that, you know, that's a weakness. It's a weakness that you, you're you so afraid of, of showing emotion because maybe you're scared of what other people say mm -hmm. or because it feels uncomfortable for you that you just won't go there. Mm -hmm. So you kind of just put up that barrier but you can't because you're a human and you have emotions. So you can only do it for so long. And I, I think for me, because my mum died when I was uh, a kid, I grew up with my dad and my brother and obviously my sister passed away as well. So I'm left with, you know, my dad and my brother, like that's my family. So I've got two men and, you know, both of them, I, I can see both of them and how they've had to struggle with, you know, that kind of like the mental health thing. They've lost people, they've grieved, but, I can also see that because of their sex or because of their gender, they haven't been given the same permissions as me to be emotional, you know, whether it's in their friendship groups, whether it's, you know, whatever it is because of stereotypes, which is exactly what you're mm -hmm. talking about. And then I see how detrimental it is because it, it means that because I can't express this part of me and what I'm feeling, it doesn't go anywhere. It won't disappear. It will stay held and it will show up in other parts of your life. Yeah in a really negative way. And then it will take you years of work to kind of to backtrack and undo it, it rather than just being honest and, and saying, I feel, this is how I feel in the moment at this time. So I give you a round of applause for being, no, you, honestly, mate, like I, I just think it's like, it's so valuable. And you don't know who's gonna listen to this. It's just like, wow, it's okay for me to talk. It's okay for me to, you know, be like, honest. It really is. It really, really is. Like, I even tell this to my boys, like, even my friends that I, I have right now, like, most of my friends, some do music, some do raps. Like, they just, they're just really... Macho. They're just macho, bro. Like, even when they're around their girlfriends, they just act so macho. Like, <laughs> so I have some of my boys that they don't uh, even take their girlfriends on dates because he thinks... I'm not about that life, but bro, no, like they they, they need to be dashed in the bin. You know what I mean? you, you what just... kind of girlfriends want them? <laughs> I'm not saying I'm not telling them to be like me, but at least talk about it. You just tell me, man. I'll, I'll listen. I'll give you advice. You give yeah. me advice is the same thing. So like, it's there's nothing wrong with it. Like, if any dudes watching this, there's nothing wrong about talking about how you feel. I will happily talk about. It. I do not care if I have something inside that I want to come up. I'll say it. I say things out of it. It's like I talk to girls. I talk to men. I'll just tell them. Because, like, at the end of the day, the more you pull out, the more you have inside. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So if you have a lot build up inside and you talk about it, you're letting it out. Yeah. You're letting it out, you're letting it out. And then that actually makes you at peace. Yeah. But if you leave it in and then keep it, keep it, keep it, keep it, keep it, keep it, you get to a point where someone will just flick your ear and then, oh, hey, you're broke. Yeah. Do you know I mean? Like, so. The anger know, comes talk, in. Man, just, just talk. It's nice. Yeah. Talk. It's good. What a good sentiment. <laughs>
what a good sentiment and like yeah just such a like open honest conversation a lot of people are scared of it a lot of people are like i used to be even i used to be like that as well like i don't want anyone to know that this is all you know that i've mm. got depression or that i'm feeling anxious or whatever and it was only when i had like my mastectomy and my boobs removed and stuff and i had I was making videos about it that I was talking about how I was feeling for the first time. And I guess like you with your audience, I got like a really positive response and I was mm -hmm. like, oh, okay. So it's okay for me to be myself and yeah. to talk openly and honestly because people need to know that. People need to know that we're all human and we all feel and we all experience and etc. Yes, that's um, true. So for you, I guess really, like with your kind of career and you're making videos, I know you're hosting like some NFL stuff today because you love American football, but there is so much, like so much more to you. Um, you can sing, which you like, you mentioned earlier, you've got an amazing voice, uh, acting. So all of these different kind of creative things that you want to get involved with. Uh -huh. Once you've created this kind of like persona of Bashy Entertainer and you do comedy, how do you then have, I guess like the... Um, the confidence to be a begin almost like a beginner at something else or at square 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 one something else because it's like right okay this thing i've kind of like i've got it i've nailed it like mm. you know i've completed it now i'm gonna go on to like something else where i'm like at the bottom does it scare you or are you just like no i can do this it doesn't, it doesn't really scare me i feel like because i've i've conquered so much doing what i'm doing i feel like if i have to if i have to take a new challenge i'm not really going to be scared to do it I'll, yeah. I'll be excited even if i have to start from the bottom then I will get to where I am. Like, I will get to there someday. Like, example, I've done Facebook videos, I've done Instagram videos. I'm starting to wanting to do music. Yeah. And there's a lot of musicians that are up there. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So for me, I'm still here. Yeah. And I'm not afraid of that. Yeah. I, I'll post something. If it doesn't even get the, the listens that it does, I don't mind because I love what I'm doing. I'm, yeah. I love the music that I'm putting out. So boom, it's there. If I'm acting and then I, they put me in like, a TV show, but I'm in the background. I don't care. It's it's the beginning always. Um, there's an app called TikTok. Yeah, I know TikTok. So when I started doing, what, what, where do you think I've been? You're like Vine. Does she know about Vine? There's an app called <laughs> well, TikTok. Bad, I bad, mean, bad, I'm bad. not that like, old, and I haven't been under a rock. <laughs> but yeah, carry on TikTok. So when I when I jumped on TikTok, I had like one one follower. Yeah. And I thought, oh yeah, because I'm bashed entertainer. If I just got jump on TikTok, everyone's gonna come here. But it wasn't like that. Right. So I had to start from the bottom and then build it up. So I just started posting videos. I posted a video and then I won't get the, the views that I'm expecting to get. Yeah. So after like a month's time, I'll get like 100 views. I'm like, you know what? I've been there before. This is how I started. And I just kept posting, just kept posting, kept posting. And then from there, it just grew. And I was like, you know what? I'm actually happy that I started from the bottom because yeah. it, it puts into your head that no matter what challenge comes, you can, you can still it. do it. Yeah. Like you should never be afraid to start a new challenge Isn't that no matter how hard it is. Isn't that I mean. interesting? Because it, yeah, because it's like you've established that audience, and then for you to go somewhere else where you didn't have that audience, you could have just been like, "Nah, I'm not really feeling this. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to put this effort in." But I guess it's reinforced to you again that if you put the effort in, you You'll can build it. You can do it. You've you got the it. power. I told this to my boys. Like, I've got a lot of boys that want to do YouTube, that want to do comedy, that want to do music. Yeah. But when I tell them what I done to get here. They're like, ah, oh, nah, allow it. Nah, it's calm, it's calm. Oh, <laughs> he's like, too like, much what work. Do you mean? So, nah, it's too much work, man. You gotta post every day, every day, consistent, consistent. Nah, I ain't got time for that. So, bro, like, you think you're just gonna become like social media famous in, in, in a day? Yeah. No, you got to put in the work. Yeah. So, like, just try it. They're like, oh, nah, I don't wanna post videos. I don't know what to post. I'm scared. I was like, bro, you won't know if people like your content if you don't put nothing out. Take your camera, put it in your face. If you're gonna talk about food, if you're gonna talk about cars, you're gonna talk about sex, bro, just post. Because a lot of people in the world, they, they like watching things. Yeah. So they like watching different people. So they may even like what you're doing. If you're talking about food, or if you're talking about cars, or you're talking about shoes, they be like, oh, I love this guy. He talks about shoes. And then in like three, four days, you can have five, ten followers. You never know. Yeah. And then that gradually will go. So just try it out. Like, don't be, don't be afraid. You've got to start. Of course, you just start it. Just do it. That's 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 my album. Just do it. Are you just supposed do it. to like Nike? Like in it. Oh yeah, yeah. Just there it is. Just do it. Get that sponsorship. I don't be afraid. Dealing. Like, there's, there's there's nothing to be scared of. To be honest, like, I think they, they they feel like if I start if I start doing YouTube or if I start doing music, the people that are already here are not gonna like mess mess with my stuff. Yeah. They're not gonna like what I'm doing, and it's gonna take me years to get to there. get there. It does not matter. Like for me, it was the same thing. But I'm a big fan of Kevin Hart. Yeah. And when I read what Kevin Hart's done, I've read his book and I've seen his documentary. It took him 19, 20 years yeah. to become the guy he is now. Yeah. 
And then I can't complain. I've already been doing it for four years. Yeah. What are you complaining for? So you're just right at the start. I'm, I'm they, and they say that, don't they? It takes 10 years to make an overnight success because people will just see kind of like this end thing. They don't realise mm. the days when you're posting videos and getting like 100 views or whatever. They weren't there for that. They weren't. They've just shown up at the last time, like you supporting Chelsea. No, I'm joking. No, wow. <laughs> Listen, everyone watching this here. Since day. Chelsea, since day, all day. I'm only joking. I'm only joking. I didn't, know. I, didn't, I didn't know. But it is that kind of thing where it's like, you know, th there were those t those times for everyone where no one cared about them. Mm. No one listened to their music. No, And then, boom, timing is everything. There you go. And like, if you watch a lot, if you watch a lot of comedians, like Viners or YouTubers, like they used to post videos back then. Yeah. And no one used to watch it. Yeah. But they've just kept on going, kept on going, kept on going, kept on going. Like, you won't even see the videos they did back then because you're so focused on what they're doing right now. Yeah. But they've been through hell to get to where they are. Yeah. So it always starts. And then I think, like, the more you love what you do, the more you love your craft and your grind, you're not going to stop. Yeah. Like, if you actually want to be a musician, you're not going to stop. You're going to keep posting music no matter what. If people don't like it, you'll still post it. If it's Hindi, if it's going. rock, you'll still post it. If your comedy is whack and it's, it's crazy, it's mental, just post it. There's going to be... There's so many people in the world. There's so many people in the world. Like you can have a million fans from Australia, no million, no fans from UK. Doesn't matter. There's still fans. There'll be someone out there in the world that will love what you're doing. So just fix up and post. Just fix up and post. What a great sentiment. Thank you so much for being here, Bash. You're it's welcome. been an absolute pleasure. Thank you for being so open, for being Thank so you. honest, and uh, for sharing so much information. Hopefully you've enjoyed this episode of the Help Yourself podcast. Please make sure you review, like, subscribe, turn on notifications, because I don't know whether you're listening or whether you're watching. But either way, thank you for being part of the journey, and we'll see you for the next episode. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Have an amazing day. Thank you. It's been a pleasure.